Hello, hello. Okay, so this is a mixing demo, color mixing demo. So here I have the primary colors. I have red, blue, and yellow. What I'm gonna do, and then I have two squirts, uh, two small uh, samples of white here. Um, what I'm going to do is mix a black using the primary colors or as close to a black as possible. Um, this is a good exercise in mixing. And then the way to test whether you have a good black is to mix the a little bit of that black into the white paint. And if you get a true gray neutral, then you know you've mixed um, a pretty good black. So let's go to work. So um, since blue is the like more saturated and probably the, the more intense and darkest of the three, I'm gonna use more, in order to mix black, I'm gonna use more blue than, than anything, than any of the other two colors. I'm going to mix not as much red, but a decent amount of red, maybe a little more. And then I'm going to grab some yellow, about that much yellow. And we'll just start to mix this and see where we fall. So this is coming out to be like a really deep purple, okay? So that tells me that I have enough blue and I have enough red, I need a little bit more yellow. So I'm gonna grab some more yellow. We'll grab a good amount of yellow and just mix it in here. Now, when you use a lot of yellow, what generally happens is you end up getting a lighter, uh, you don't get black really, you get more like brown, as you can see here. Um, so, this is more of a brown, like a kind of a dark brown, but not, not too dark of a brown. So what I want is more blue, because again, blue is the probably the darkest, most intense of the three primary colors. So I'll grab some more blue. Not a whole, whole lot, but just more. You always, it's always best practice to work in small amounts. And then because you can always add more, but you can't really take away once you've started to mix. Okay. So this is becoming a little darker. I'm going to grab some more blue. And I believe this will put us where we need to be. It's not like jet black, but... It also is not any one color doesn't dominate. It's a, a good neutral. I'm gonna add a little bit more blue to try to put it over the edge into black territory. Okay. Um, one thing that we can do in order to test. So there is probably as close to black as possible. Um, let me go ahead and grab a little more blue to see if I could make it go even further into that territory, which I think that did. Now, what I'm going to do is just, I'm gonna push this down a little further and then I'm just gonna spread this out a bit, okay? Okay, so it it is a little bit in the deep, like plum territory. Um, deep plum. Let me see what this does. This might add to it. It really is kind of like a, um, you know, an evaluation, a continuous evaluation of what it is you have. I know I don't need any more red because that's gonna make it burgundy. But what I do think I might need is a little more yellow. And 
I definitely think that that helped. I'm gonna grab a little bit more yellow. Can't use too much yellow because again, it will make it brighter because yellow is um, the least intense out of the three primary colors. Okay, so now, now I'm there. So now I'm gonna test this, this black. It still is kind of in the plum territory. However, I'm just gonna use what I have here. So I'm gonna start to mix this into the white. And I get a gray, but that gray does have kind of like a, um, like a purplish tone to it. So I could probably stand a little more yellow. Um, so again, you wanna test your black by making a gray. And if your gray has any, if your gray is not neutral, then you need to go back to the mixing board. So I'm gonna grab some more yellow and see what I could do here. Let's just grab all of that yellow and just try that out and see what happens. I think that that helped. So now, if I were to go here and start to mix this, Let's mix a little bit more of this in. See, this is more of a neutral gray. Okay. It's more of a neutral gray right here. Um, so I'm closer. Okay, so that's the idea when it comes to mixing a black or a brown or a neutral. You want to make sure that that is actually a neutral as opposed to um, a, 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 new, a, a somewhat neutral. All right, so the next thing is purple. So again, I need some blue. Here, let's move this back a little bit. I'll put blue here and I need a little bit of red. Again, we're, we're only dealing with primary colors. Because for the most part, you can mix whatever you need using a primary color. There are some other colors that, you know, you might have to go a different route and use different um, tones. Uh, but for the color wheel, this is, we're sticking with the primary colors. So I want a true purple. Um, now, if I were to take a scoop of blue or half of this blue and put it into all of this red, it's going to turn out with, with red being the primary or the leading tone. But what I want to do is I want to take about half of the blue. I'll put that over here. And I really want to just kind of grab small amounts. I barely grabbed you see here's my palette knife and so I want to start to feed that blue with the red um so I'm gonna grab more and that that's how you want to handle this because if you take large amounts and, and if you think about it, purple is more of, has a little more blue than, than red. So blue would be the primary color there. And again, you wanna take small amounts of red and mix it in to get a true purple or a true violet. So, Here's my purple. Okay. Um, 
again, if you want to test that, throw some white on there. Make a tint of the purple to ensure that you have a true purple. Now, if you're talking about tertiary colors and you're talking about, um, here, let me. So here's my purple. So that's my test. That's a true purple. You can see that there, true purple, okay? Um, so let's go to red violet. If we're talking red violet, then red is gonna lead, right? So I want more red than I do blue. And then I want a small amount of blue, a smaller amount of blue. So I'm just gonna start to mix this red. And actually what I can do is I could take some of this purple that's already mixed and start to feed it into the red to get that red violet. <laughs> so a lot of this is just experimentation. So here's my red violet. So you should see the difference between, so the red leaves here, this almost is like a burgundy, but you can see blue uh, mixed in. You can see that there's violet it incorporated into this red, but um, hence uh, red, violet, uh, the intermediate or tertiary color, those two uh, terms mean the same thing. And then my purple here is a true purple. Um, blue, violet, same thing. So you get the idea. With blue violet, blue is going to be the lead color. So you'll see more blue than you would uh, red or purple. Um, so same thing for green, yellow, and blue. Same thing for, actually, let me do a, a quick example of orange. So out of red and orange, actually, I don't need any red. I just need a little bit of yellow because I'm going to use this red. So if I put yellow here yellow and red make orange i don't need all of this red guess how much red i need just a tiny bit like that amount of red and i start to mix this into my orange i'm sorry into my yellow to get orange you see how how little red I needed to get my orange. So if you were to take the opposite and you take that larger amount of uh, yellow and switch that to red. So if you had a larger amount of red and you just put just a tiny bit of yellow in the red, it's not going to work. It's going to be red still because red is more intense than yellow. Um, so... And it's the same concept as it pertains to like yellow orange, that intermediate color is going to have is the yellow is going to be more present than the actual orange. Um, so that is what I want to show you as far as mixing color. Uh, it really is experimentation a lot of the times. And then the more you do it, then the more you will become knowledgeable about what you need to add, how much you need to add, how much you need to mix. Um, and you'll become uh, better and better at it. All right. Thank you.